welcome you to another edition of our Bring You Word, also serving as a Champions Night Bible Service online. We're live. I welcome all of you on Facebook, and I welcome all of you on YouTube and Instagram. Welcome, 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 wherever you're watching us. I'd like you to invite your friends. It's another time to uh, hear God's word. Uh, tonight's message is going to be very interesting. Uh, if you are in the uh, continent of North America, it's afternoon, but in Africa, it's already evening. Praise God. So wherever you're watching in God's beautiful earth, I want to welcome you in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. Like I always say on this broadcast, share, share, share. It will be a, a, a very good gift to give to someone. You never can know who needs this word that God is about to release and unleash upon us. Everything that we experience in life uh, cannot be outside the word of God as children of God. When God's word is in the is in focus, when God's word is the ultimate, then you are bound to experience miracles. I want to welcome every one of you in our church in Africa. Welcome, All Stars Nation. I believe you're gathered and you're ready to hear God's word. It's an honor and privilege to serve God's word fresh from the bakery of heaven. Let us pray. Father, in the eternal name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, we come before you. What an honor it is, O oh God, to break bread. What an honor it is to hear the living word of God. I pray, Father, that as I speak, oh God, I will speak nothing but your word. And every man, woman, boy, girl, child that hears your word today will be transformed by the power of your word. I pray for salvation. I pray for deliverance. And I pray for miracle healing, oh God, to take place in our lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that our faith will begin to walk in dimensions we've never seen before. I pray, oh God, your word declares that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word, hearing by the word of God. As we hear your word tonight, oh God, this very hour, this very minute, oh God, as we hear your word, let faith rise in our heart to, to such a degree that impossibilities become possible in the precious name of our Lord Jesus. We give you the glory, Lord. We give you the honor. It is in Jesus' precious name we pray. And the people say, Amen. All right, praise God. Uh, today we're going to read about three or four scriptures. We're still in our month of uh, healing. I said this is a month of all round supernatural healing. All round supernatural healing. That's what we, we, we trust the Lord for. All right, now let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Mark, Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. Let's begin from Matthew chapter 9. I hope you were blessed with Sunday's message. Amen. That's some things. Matthew chapter 9. I want you to find it. Matthew chapter 9. We're going to read from uh, the 20th yeah. verse. Today's message is lessons from a, from a no-name woman. Lessons from a no-name woman. Matthew chapter 9 verse 20. It says, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood came uh, for issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment for she said within herself if i may touch his garment i shall be whole but jesus turned him about and when he saw her he said daughter uh, be of good comfort thy faith has made thee whole and the woman was made whole from that hour Praise be to God. Now, if you read this scripture just like that, you would not have a complete picture of just what uh, the Spirit of God will have me to say to you tonight. Because listen to this. Uh, we all know, I mean, this is one of the uh, passages of the Bible that every preacher that is cutting their teeth in preaching uses. I'm telling you, there's literally no preacher who hasn't preached from this scripture. 
Everyone, I mean, even ministers, evangelists, young preachers, elderly preachers, all kinds of people that preach from the scripture. You know what happens? They always talk about the woman with the issue of blood. And you hear people preach about, oh, whatever your issue is, God is going to heal you of your issue. You hear people talk about, oh, whatever, uh, how long it has been, God is going to heal you of it. But listen to me, child of God. There is much more I want us to glean from the scripture. Uh, uh, this is a month of healing. And as I began to ponder and meditate upon the different kinds of healing that uh, has taken place in the scripture, this particular account is always outstanding and amazing to me. First of all, the woman's name is not mentioned. If you look at the preceding verses in verse 18, the Bible talks about, about a ruler called Jairus. He says, while he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, my daughter is is is." now even at, uh, is even now dead but come and lay your hands upon her and she shall live and jesus arose and followed her and they talk about jairus's daughter so he goes to verse 20 and says behold he said a woman which had a disease for 12 years came from behind and the press and touched him and of course we know the story but my thing is this first of all i want you to understand that there i thank god that this particular story is recorded in three different uh uh, gospels is recorded in Matthew, is recorded in Mark, and is recorded in Luke. And I want, I will look at every one of them holistically for us to be able to glean uh, what does says the Lord from this scripture. Now, watch this. The woman had no name. The woman's name was not mentioned. She had suffered from an issue of blood that made her unclean for 12 solid years. She heard that Jesus was there. She came from behind and touched him. But let's go to Mark's gospel and see certain, let's go to Mark's gospel. I don't want to go ahead of myself today. Let, let's just go to Mark's gospel. Mark chapter 5. Let's look at the 25th verse. Mark chapter 5. Look at the 25th verse. Mark chapter 5, look at the 25th verse. It says, And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garments. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straight away, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? 31. And his disciples said unto him, thou seest the multitude strong in thee and says thou would touch me and he looked around about to see her that had done this thing but the woman fearing and trembling knowing what was done in her came and fell down before him and told him all the truth and he said unto her daughter thy faith had made thee whole go in peace and be whole of thy plague so you see that mark is beginning to unveil even much more that uh, uh, than what uh, matthew had told us now mark is telling us that this woman yes she had an issue of blood for 12 years, but not just that. She has suffered many things from many physicians, but she nothing, she was nothing better, but rather she grew worse. So I need you to hold on to all this information because very, very soon we are going to understand why I am taking time to read every single one of them. Look, come with me, come with me. Let's go to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Look at Luke chapter 8. Let's look at verse 43, Luke chapter 8, verse 43. So we've seen Matthew, we've seen Mark. Now let's look at the account of Luke. Luke chapter 8, verse 43. Luke chapter 8, verse 43. It says, and a, certain wo and a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which has spent all her living upon physicians, neither could, neither could be healed of any came behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood stopped, stanched. And she said, 
who and he said and jesus said who touched me when all the night peter and they that were with him said master the multitude turned thee and pressed thee and says thou who touched me and jesus said somebody had touched me for i perceive that virtue has gone out of me oh my goodness verse 47 and then the woman saw that she was not hid she came trembling falling down before him she declared unto him before all the people for what cause for 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 what cause she had touched him and she and and now she was healed immediately and she said on and he said unto her daughter be of good comfort thy faith had made thee whole go in peace praise god so we have seen the three accounts Come with me. This is a Bible study. Come with me. We've seen the three accounts. The first account just told us there was a woman. She had an issue of blood for 12 years. She came from behind and touched him. The second account said there was a woman. She had an issue of blood for 12 years. She has suffered many things for many physicians, but rather did not get any better, but rather she grew worse. She came from behind, touched him, and got well. The third account says there was a woman had an issue of blood for 12 years. She has spent all her living. Now, now the, 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 the entire story begins to change for me. She has spent all her living on physicians. And I said it at the beginning of this uh, a month when we began this healing broadcast for the month of, of, of July. I said, I'm not here to knock down doctors, but I'd like you to know, child of God, that there are certain things you're going through. It is not medical science that will put you through. There are certain healings you're looking for. Medical science, doctors and physicians cannot help. I'm not saying they are not valuable. I'm not saying they are not useful. I'm saying there are issues in your life that will require a, a, a miracle. That's, that's just it. That will require a miracle. The Bible said that this woman has spent all her living, all her living, her entire living upon physicians. She has spent all her living. Her savings was gone. A 401k was gone. Her retirement was gone. Her entire savings was, 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 was gone, completely evaporated. Praise God Almighty. But yet this woman was still a woman that refused to give up. Somebody say here. Somebody say here. Somebody say here. Somebody say here. Now, what are the lessons I want us to learn from this woman? Because this woman is such a woman that it never ceases to amaze me. The Bible said she has suffered many things of many physicians for 12 years. Can you imagine going through bleeding profusely for 12 years? You may be a man watching me today and you are not suffering from the issue of blood like I would like you to understand. This is just an analogy. We all have different issues we're suffering with or oh, suffering from or suffering by and we are seeking solution to the things that have visited our lives that are not pleasant we're seeking solution to the vicissitudes of life to the to the trouble of life to the disasters we are confronted with to the problems of life we're seeking we are diseased in one area or the other and there you are seeking solution that there is there seem to be no solution but hear me this woman this woman taught me so much one of the first things i want us to understand that whether she had a name or not it was irrelevant but she kept hope alive one thing i will never 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 forget about this woman is that she refused to give up i don't know where she got the strength from but reading this scripture i begin to understand that there are certain times in life regardless of what comes upon you you must resolve in your heart never to give up that's the first thing we have to that's the bottom line because hear me what you need will take a miracle and a miracle is simply put something that cannot be explained scientifically it cannot be explained logically it cannot be explained mathematically it cannot it doesn't make natural sense if you can explain it is not a miracle tonight tonight's focus of my message is miracle healing I believe God that tonight miracle healing will be released into your life, into your body, into your issue, into your circumstance, into your family in the name of Jesus. Miracle healing will be released in, upon our nation and the nations of the earth. Miracle healing. 
I'm telling you, child of God, oh my goodness, I'm telling you, child of God, this woman refused to give up regardless of all the pains. Do you know what it means, physically speaking, to be bleeding for 12 solid years? Do you have any idea what it means? And I, I, just as if that was not enough, adding to her pain, this woman spent her entire resources was depleted. Her entire, oh my God, savings was gone. It was enough for her to say, I'm done with life. I will commit suicide. I, will, I refuse to try. I refuse to make, I refuse to get out of bed. There is no point. Listen, she went to the specialist doctors. She went to, I mean, all kinds of gynecologists, all kinds of specialists in her, no one, not to. We don't know the exact number, but the Bible says many physicians, many physicians, 12 years. I bet every other month she's jumping to another one. Every other month they say, no, you have to travel. Someone is, is somewhere, he's better. She will go. She was being referred from one doctor to another, from one doctor to another. What has life thrown on you that you're being referred from one place to another? Tonight, by the special grace of God, a miracle healing is going to be released in your life in the precious name of Jesus. Somebody's out here. Somebody's out here. Mm. She refused to give up. She refused to give up. She refused to give up. Who am I talking to? I want to move to the next point. But yet my heart is anchored on this very first one. She refused to give up. Maybe I'm talking to myself. Maybe I'm talking to you. Whoever you are, I know there is a word here for everybody. That regardless of what you are faced with, just refuse to give up. Let that be settled in your heart. Never give up. She spent all the money she spent without a reform. I wish I had the address of those doctors to say, you got to reform this woman. She spent all that she had, no refund. And then one bright morning, she heard that Jesus Christ of Nazareth was passing by. The Bible said she came from behind. But listen, before she came from behind, you need to know that the first thing the Bible says is that she came. I cannot but tell you about that four-letter word, came. The woman showed up. Friends, you can't win in life if you refuse to show up. You can't succeed in life if you refuse to show up. This Wednesday Bible study, I want you to know that regardless of what your desires may be, regardless of what you are trusting the Lord for, regardless of what you are pursuing in life, one of the key to success is showing up. It's showing up. You've got to show up. You've got to be in it to win it. You've got to be in it to win. That's why even when I want to give up, I, I told you the other day, I said, I, I love the song by Travis Green and I love the song that says, I almost gave up. I, I, I was right at the edge of a breakthrough. I couldn't see it. God's mercy helped me. Listen, many times as children of God, we want to give up because of the things we're going through. But God just refused for us to give up. He keeps holding us. Even when you say, listen, right now I'm done. I give up. You can't still give up. You can't still give up. So the woman came. But this time as she was coming, she had said something in her heart. She said, she, she had spoken to herself. There's a message I preached a couple of years ago. I think I'm going to go back to that message. It's titled, Talk to Yourself. It's, it, it, oh my goodness. You need, you need, I'm going to look for a way to upload that message very soon. Talk to yourself. The devil has been talking to us. Sickness has been talking to us. Lack has been speaking to you. Every voice is contending for your attention. You need to give attention to your own voice that is saturated by the word of God. Your voice that is going to speak the right thing. You need to learn to talk to yourself. The woman said to herself, she didn't speak to any other person because perhaps they would not believe her anymore. There are situations in your life uh, talking to any other human being may not help you because no one really knows what you are going through. They won't have told her, but you remember when to the last specialist, nothing came out of it. So don't bother yourself about this one. You know you don't even have money anymore. You're owing on your on your bills. So we, we, we I mean, just forget it. Maybe this is how your life was meant to be. Maybe this is how you, you, you were just supposed to die. Don't, 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 don't worry about it. It is well. And they tried to give her all kinds of, 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 of religious jargon. But the Bible said, the woman said within her Herself, she spoke to herself. She said, this time I have a target. I'm not going to no ordinary man. I'm going to touch the hem of 
of his garment. And I don't have time to begin to preach and tell you what that signifies. But listen to me, child of God, the hem of Jesus' garment is meant to be the concentration point of where the anointing really, really dwells. Listen to this. Listen to this. The Bible said she pressed. So she came, she came from behind. She didn't let them see her anymore. Sometimes you win when you don't let them see you coming. Sometimes you get over when you don't let them see you coming. Most of the times our problem is our mouth. We talk too much. We speak too soon. Now there is a power in your talking. There is power in your speaking. But you've got to know the time to speak. You've got to know when to talk. You've got to know to whom to talk. To. You've got to know what comes out of your mouth when you speak. This woman spoke the right thing to herself. She said, if I may touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. That was her target. She came from behind. She pressed. There were other people touching Jesus, but yet it was ordinary touch. No one was connecting. No one had the faith to connect to what was in the life of Jesus Christ, in the body of Jesus Christ, what was at the disposal of death. Them, having Jesus in their in, in their presence, but this woman had faith. Her faith became a syringe that drew out the virtue from the life of Jesus, from the body of Jesus, even via his garment. Hear this and hear this well. Jesus Christ said a statement to her that astounded me. Jesus said to her, "Go thy way; thy faith has made thee whole." I began to ask myself a question: Does it mean that this woman had faith even when she was suffering all these things, even when she was going? from one physician to another? Does it mean that right now you may be at the lowest ebb of life, yet you have faith? Does it mean that right now things may not be looking rosy for you, yet you have faith? Does it mean that right now you are at the bottom of the ladder and no one seems to be helping you? Does it mean you can still be having faith and going through all kinds of things? Because Jesus said to the woman, Jesus never prayed for the woman. Jesus never laid hands on the woman. Jesus never prophesied on the woman. Our Lord and Savior, our Master Jesus, our Savior, our King, our Lord, never did any, any, any pronouncement over the woman except for the fact that Jesus, our King, said, someone touched me. His disciples said, the multitude trunk thee. How says thou who oh, someone touched me? Jesus said, I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. Virtue means goodness. The goodness, the goodness. You remember, I told you in Acts chapter 10 verse 38, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who went up with power and the Holy Ghost, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Part of the commission of our Lord Jesus was the ministry of healing. Jesus Christ carries it bodily. Are you hearing me? That even his garment was, was touching with power. Jesus said, who touched me? When the woman found out that she was not hidden, she came and told the entire story before everybody. Say, listen, I've suffered for 12 years. I've lost everything I have. I'm in debt right now. But I said to myself, if I may touch but the hem of his garment, I will be whole. And so she pressed. Sometimes you need to understand it will take a little more press. It will take a little more pressure. It will take a little more of your moving much more than you have already done for you to get there child of god press so back to what i said about faith jesus said to the woman thy faith has made thee whole and, and listen I, I cannot say to you def definitively if she had faith before or if she didn't have faith or if she had or no, no but what i know for jesus to say that your faith has made thee whole at that point at least we have confirmed that at the point of our healing her faith was involved at the point when the miracle took place, her faith, her faith was a, a medium to draw that virtue. It was her faith. So I want to say to you, my brothers and my sisters, wherever you are listening to me, don't lose your faith. You may lose your money, you may lose friends, you may lose terrors, you may lose physical things, material things, you may lose your home, you may lose your whatever, but don't lose your faith. You know why? It is your faith that will bring back that car you lost, it will bring back the home you lost, it will bring back the, amen, the faith will bring back the wealth that was depleted. Your faith is crucial. 
in this time where we live in this 21st century your faith is your most prized commodity don't lose faith are you hearing me so when we talk about lessons we're learning from a, a, a no-name woman one of the first lessons is her doggedness never to give up number two she always showed up number three she pressed she was a woman that learned how to press sometimes we don't have the strength to press if you are here right now no strength to press I pray the Lord refresh you. There is a button in heaven that God can tap and it will refresh you. He will blow from his mouth and a fresh strength will come upon you. Wherever and however you are going to pray that prayer with me tonight, that God will strengthen you because you must press. And number th- number four, the pressing was from behind. You got to re-strategize. Sometimes it's important for you to re-strategize and come Come from behind. You can win from 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 behind. You can win from coming from behind. You can win. You can win, child of God. You can win. You can win. You can win. Are you hearing me? And then finally, she did the touching. She touched his clothes. She hit the target. She set a target and she met that target. She touched his clothes. She touched his clothes and that's you. Popped out, popped out, popped out of the clothes and healed her. Instant miracle, unexplainable. No, 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 take these five tablets every two hours. No, it wasn't a physical physician that did this. So everything I'm just saying in this popular story is to let you know that healing can happen via miracle. Are you hearing me? And I tell you, by what Christ said, she got more than just physical healing of that blood issue. She became whole. She became whole. Come on, somebody. A woman who was, I don't, I, I'm, I'm fighting not to use the word desperate because most times when you look at up the, the usage of the word desperate, it means not having hope. But there's another aspect of desperate that tells you that because of the impending danger you cry out you are you are you are forceful you are pressful you are you are resilient you are you just refuse to give up the woman may be considered in our modern day usage of the word desperate as a desperate mad woman but she refused to give up she refused to give up she refused to give up i'm telling you we don't even want to count how much she spent in, or, 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 even in to keep sanitary her sanitary condition. We can't even evaluate the kind of pain and stigma. She was an outcast. Everywhere she go unclean, 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 unclean. Are you hearing me? But this woman came from behind because she has said, I will touch him. I will touch him, not just physical touch. You, th- this was not what happened. No, it was a touch of faith. Faith plus touch equal miracle. It was a touch of faith. It was a touch of faith. And hear me, child of God. Like I said, miracle doesn't make sense. Miracle cannot be explained. If you can explain it, then it's not a miracle. If you're asking me to define what a miracle is, I'm just going to give you in the simplest term that I can possibly give you. A miracle is something that happens from divinity into humanity that doesn't make sense. A miracle is God's intervention into the ordinary course of human life. God's supernatural intervention into our ordinary course of living. When when God, when divinity intervenes or there's an intervention in humanity and you cannot explain it, it's a miracle. It is a miracle, child of God. And I prophesy in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My time is almost up. I'm virtually at the first page of this of this Bible course because I want I want I want you to go home with something. But I respect the time, no problem. But I want you to go home with something to understand that yes, there are people who are going through tough times, but they refuse to give up. If this unnamed woman refused to give up, number one thing you must not forget in this Bible study class don't give up if the devil will have to take you out he must come kill you by himself and guess what he doesn't have such authority he's depending on you to take yourself out he's waiting on you to take yourself out when i began to discover that i said okay you know what yes i may be in pain i may cry no one will say that you no one is denying the pain you're going through you may cry 
You may be in such a situation that you feel, look, I'm done. Some days may be so gloomy and you're like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Yes, but after that, you wipe your tears, lift up your head and look unto the hills from when cometh your help. For my help cometh from the Lord, not any other Lord, but the one that made the heavens and the earth. She was still a believer. She still had faith. And listen to me, if we, if you belong to the school of thought that says she had faith while she was going through all she was going through, then we have to understand how to apply our faith. Then her faith must, what, what, she, you've got to use what you have. That's all I'm trying to say. If indeed Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Yeshua Messiah said to the woman, thy faith that made you whole. Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't have something and not use it to my advantage. You've got something you need to use. Listen, what you have, what you have been given is able to bring what you are looking for. There is something you have right now that can deliver into your hands that which you seek, that which you are, you are praying for, that which you are running after, that which your heart desires. There's something you have. There's something you have. Yes, she lost her money. Yes, she spent all. She spent all. Dr. Jones took her money. Dr. David took her money. And if your name is Jones or David, my apologies. I'm just calling the names randomly. Dr. Chooks took her money. Dr. Glass took her money. Dr. Stone took her money. Everybody took her money. No refund. But nobody could take her faith. Nobody could take her faith. I don't care if you love me or you hate me. I don't care if you want me to succeed or you want me to fail. I don't care if you're planning against me right now. But here it is. You can't take my faith. You can't take my faith. You can't take my faith. You know why? Because my faith is not in, in, in any man. My faith is not in anything physical. My faith is in God. My faith is in God. My faith is in God. And there are two things you must remember about faith. We talk about, I'm a faith preacher. We talk about the God kind of faith. But we must not forget that faith must also be in God. Because Jesus said, have faith in God. And I know as theologians, we've tried to repair and reconstruct that scripture to say the exact thing should be, have the God kind of faith. I'm not arguing that. Yes, we need to have the God kind of faith. The kind of faith that God operates with. Good. But after that, you need to simply put it this way, have faith in God. Have faith in God. A miracle healing will take place. Child of God, I need it so desperately. I know you need it so desperately. We all have issues. Yours may not be of blood, but whatever your issue is, the Lord sent me by to tell you how did the woman's story end? The woman's story ended by this wonderful five-letter word. W-H-O-L-E. W H. O L E, whole. Go thy way, thy faith had made thee whole. So, a woman that came with an issue, she left with wholeness. A woman that came bleeding, she left with wholeness. A woman that came from behind the press, unknown. At the end of the day, she was not behind him anymore. She was in front of the master. Everyone heard it. Because hear me, she couldn't have even come from in front because the protocol would never let her get there. Some of you, are you've got to break certain protocols to get to where you want. Are you listening to me? And you can break those protocols in prayer. You can break those protocols on your knee. You can break those protocols coming from behind. Someone needs to hear this. I think someone just joined. Listen, 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 listen. Don't let them see you coming. Don't let them see you coming. Don't let them see you coming. Arise from where you are. Learn from this woman. Most of us would have cursed God. 12 years. Oh, it's not a joke. 12 years. 12 solid unbroken yes but the woman refused to give up oh my god I, I i i i'm so sorry most of you that are used to my way of preaching and teaching maybe i did it differently today but hear me i just wanted to talk to you today for my heart is a bible study i just want to talk to you from my heart i just want to talk to you from my heart don't lose your faith. 
There's a miracle, miracle. <laughs> a miracle healing <laughs> that is coming. Let us pray. Father, I thank you. Oh, thank you. Peace. Oh, yes. Every one of you in church right now, every one of you at home right now, wherever you're watching me, if you're watching live, if you're in church, rise on your feet. Go on your knees. I want you to symbolically just wrap your hands around yourself like this. Hold yourself like this. Ah. Some of you may need to just lay your hands on your head. Just lay your hands. So you can either wrap yourself like this or lay your hands on your head. Peace. The peace of God that passes human understanding is coming upon you right now. Peace. 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 And I say to you prophetically from the words, I lift the words from the mouth of our Lord Jesus. For this is how the Lord will ask me to end this broadcast. Go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Behold. Behold, if you are sick in any part of your body, listen to me. Miracle healing is coming upon you right now. Wherever you are under the sound of my voice, I declare miracle healing in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua Messiah. Receive your miracle. Receive it now. From the crown of your head to the soles and tip of your toes, I declare you well. I declare you whole. I declare you healed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace. Peace. In Jesus' precious name. I'd like you to begin to do what you could not do before. The Spirit of God is already gone into super action and taken away that issue in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you were sick in any part of your body, begin to exercise your body right now. I tell you by the special grace of God, you have been made well. And if your own issue is not physical sickness, listen to me, as you rise from this place, from this service right now, even if you're not watching us live, I don't know how many months have gone by and you just stumbled out over this video. The power of God that was present right now, life is also available to heal you of whatever issue it may be in the precious name of our Lord Jesus. Before I sign out right now, we're going to take our offerings in church and those of you that want to give online, just go ahead and do so. But I want to encourage you to subscribe to our brand new YouTube channel. It's called Rogo Connect. We are going to be uploading a lot of life-changing content on that platform. Please like, please subscribe, please share the video, leave a comment. Uh, people are commenting already. I'm seeing your comments. Go ahead and do that. I respond to all to the comments and whatever God lays upon my heart to encourage you with, I will go ahead and do that. Just go ahead and and, 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 and just subscribe to our social media platforms. We're on Facebook as Rogo Connect. We're on uh, Instagram as Rogo Connect. We are on YouTube as Rogo Connect. R-O-G-O -O Connect. All one word. I bring you word by God's special grace. There is a special edition coming up this Sunday by the special grace of God. It's been bubbling in my heart. You can't miss this. Every single broadcast in this month of July, we're going to be talking about supernatural healing. There's an aspect, and I'm going to open your eyes by God's special grace to show you where the healing pot is where the healing pot is, in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I love you. I got to go. I, I don't know. I, oh, praise be to his holy name. Whatever, if you if you need special prayers, I'd like you to just go ahead right now. Go ahead right now. Send your prayer request to rogomissions at gmail.com. Rogomissions, R-O-G-O, missions at gmail.com. I'm going to be taking time to pray over that request with for you and pray along with you and trust God for a miracle in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Until we meet again on this same broadcast, I bring you word by his special grace this coming Sunday. I want you to know that Jesus Christ is Lord. I love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.